Okay, before we get into more settings adjustments, like what settings you can use for different time frames and different currency pairs, let's get into support and resistance in a very simple way that I think anybody and everybody at any experience level in trading should be able to go in and analyze the market on the weekend or getting into you know periods where the market's slow to do an ongoing organic campaign of ongoing support and resistance tracking so what I typically do I do it it's very easy I use two charts I use the four hour chart the H4 and I use a daily on occasion I'll go see a monthly uh, chart and see I mean a weekly chart and see where there's some really big you know multi-year key uh, levels but it just in general week after week the two charts that I always use for for core support and resistance tracking are the H4 chart and the D1 the daily and how do I do it okay I take a colored line horizontal line and I start paying attention to obvious areas of clustered support where there's been multiple instances of price attracted to an area and that area appears to be holding well right right away let's look at where support was on this chart going back here into the month of September of 2017 we can see there was the big sell-off and we have price bounced off this area consolidated a bit and then traded higher so so let's say I'm trading I'm, I'm getting ready to work some daily scalp setups and I happen to be in a day where the market is trading back down to that area of price well if I already have that level tracked and I'm paying attention to it you know that was a key area price had a huge move stop there obviously was supported by buyers and that price was rejected and at no time going forward has price ever been able to go back and check or I should say retest that area of support and then suddenly on this particular day in January of 2018 price is down here testing pressing through that area so what would I be doing as a trader then it's really simple when I see the market retest key areas that it's achieved in the past whether it's support or resistance I pay attention to that so how I set up my MT4 panel on my various screens is I have one set of screens that are all the key instruments that I trade they're all the higher time frame charts usually I'm paying attention to H4 charts intraday on the weekend I'll go look at daily charts and I'll make sure on my H4 charts I have key price levels that I've that I've tracked and I've determined on the daily chart added to my H4 charts so I can see those key levels so in this case on a day where I see price coming down and literally touching that area of price if I'm on a lower time frame chart I'm going to be looking for two types of trade setups as I'm trading the pound dollar as price reacts to this price level I'm going to be looking for on the five minute chart the 15 minute chart the 30 minute chart whatever is my primary chart that I go attack trade entries on I'm going to look for growing momentum and looking for buy setups so I'll be slightly biased to buy setups looking for them on the pound dollar I want to see price leaving this area of obvious prior support and now being retested so that's the first thing I'm looking for so if I see price lifting during the day intraday on my lower time frame chart I'm going to be absolutely excited about getting in any of these days as price is not at this point holding and maintaining near this level of support 
I'm going to look for price leaving that area. And why? Because if price can't break through, smart money will be in here buying it and driving price back away from that level. So that means I, I have a high expectation that upside momentum could really run hard. So I could get into a trade that could end up being a 6 to 1, 8 to 1, 10 to 1 on my runners. These are also situations where I'll tend to leave the whole trade on and try to get the whole trade to get 4 to 1, 5 to 1, 6 to 1 reward to risk. In my opinion, the two best ways to trade Forex are to trade price reactions to support and resistance and trading out of news. So not trading right when the second the news hits, but trading the high moves of mo or high momentum moves that are typically produced by energy coming into the market as a result of a news event. Some countries GDP numbers, some countries central bank interest rate news, inflation numbers, uh, all the key main economic reports. I would be looking for price on my lower time frame charts. So in other words, if I'm getting sell signals, I'm sitting on my hands. If I see price holding at this price level or above and I'm getting long signals, I'm more inclined to get in and attack those signals on that particular instrument that's reacting to a key support or resistance level. The next thing I'm looking for is a breakthrough support or resistance, what would typically be called like a breakout to the upside or a breakdown busting through support. So if we're breaking through resistance and running up in price, I call it a breakout. When we're testing support, we're chipping away through it and we start accelerating, I call that a breakdown. Some people call both of those a breakout. Oh well. <laughs> if I start seeing price chipping through and then accelerating, now I'm looking for short signals. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for what's called range extension where price extends its range until it starts consolidating again. So usually you can get 80 to 100 pips on breakthrough of support. A lot of times you can get 80 to 100 pips intraday on a bounce off support. Breakdowns have nice extensions. Bounces have nice extensions, whether we're bouncing off support or bouncing off a resistance level or breaking through support or breaking out above resistance. That's why tracking support and resistance is critical. It adds a whole area of trade possibilities that have a lot of energy in them. So if I'm tracking eight instruments and I'm noticing that you know, on one of the eight instruments that day is starting to react to a key support or resistance level, I'm Johnny on the spot getting ready on my lower time frame charts to take advantage of a bust or a breakthrough. Okay, let's go into objects list and let's get rid of these lines for a moment. And how, how do you track support and resistance? Okay, what you can typically do, I like to compress price. So let's say, let's, let's just say this was the hard right edge of my chart and I wanted to start tracking where I see key support resistance going from the right side of my screen to the left. So right away obvious, some areas I can see the highest point from right to left is this pivot right here. Now we're on a four hour chart so that this is a prominent area. Going back from that, my first near-term area of support, right in here, I can see it was tested once, somewhat tested a second time. So this area so far, any reactions to it, that's going to get me paying attention to my lower time frame chart. If news hits and price is all the way up here touching this area, that's going to get my attention. I'm going to look for a bounce down off resistance or a break out above resistance on my lower time frame charts. Okay, going back, my next most prominent area where price traded and changed directions. So we see there's a bit of support here. Price came down, 
tested health and traded higher. Going farther back from right to left, my next area where I can very obvi obviously see price broke down, held, and lifted. And you'll see this price tends to stair step higher. It'll come back challenge areas, hold or break through. In this case, hold and, and trade higher or trade lower as the market's breaking down. Now here's an area. I have a little node of support here. A couple of retests. I'm going to go ahead and move this down right into this little cluster, this whole area right here. If I saw a price in that area, I'd start paying attention to it. Just below that, I have another node. And just below that, I have another node. So typically what I do on a four hour chart, I like to go back at least three to four months. And then, you know, even if like five or six months back, there's a huge, you know, area of a big, and, and that's another thing to pay attention to. Very big, like V bottom spikes where it, we have a big trade down and then a big trade back up. Those are prominent. Same thing where you have a big run up, it's rejected and runs down. Inverted V's and regular V's, V bottoms and inverted V tops, those are key, key areas you definitely want to be tracking on a four hour chart or a daily chart. So going forward, I see price comes up and it tested an area. Now notice how this area we had as resistance, it didn't hang out here for a while, it just pressed right through. That's a breakout. So on my lower time frame chart, as I'm seeing price pressing through with no opposition to it, that would have me looking for ways to get long on my lower time frame chart. So let's say several days later, this is where I'm at. And let's just say it's a Sunday night going into a Monday morning. Okay, I'm going to go on my four hour chart and I'm going to track my levels, get ready for the week ahead. I see that this prior resistance busted. And now I have a little bit of support right in this area. Going back from that, we had a pullback. It held and the market ran up very hard from that area. I'm going to indicate that area as an area of support that I want to pay attention to. We had a lot of clustered activity. It maintained this area of price. So I know there should be some support in this area of price that if it gets challenged again, I'm going to pay attention to it. And the more tests to an area and holds, the more prominent it is, and v inverted V's and regular V bottoms mean something. That means there's a sudden reaction where counter, you know, buyers were in here driving it higher, buyers exhaustion hit, and sellers immediately came in and rejected price, sold into it. Sellers are in control, they exhaust, buyers immediately come in, buy the area, and reject price from that prior level. So the same exercise that I just conducted on a four hour chart, I do that on a daily. The daily levels, let's just go, let's convert this to a daily chart. Let's go ahead, let's leave the lines we had from the four hour chart. And let me move this chart back. Now let's take a look at we're on a daily chart now. So let's look at some of the levels on a four hour chart. Okay, right here, this level, as you can see, uh, we hadn't run up yet. So we were sitting right about like that. So this was an area of support, that was resistance. And you can see these four hour chart levels typically line up with prominent levels on the daily. So the more I look at this area on the daily, I like this area a little bit better because we had one, two tests and then it took off. So a lot of times you'll see a lot of synchronization between the four hour and daily chart. Sometimes on the daily you'll see very prominent, you know, areas that were rejected, sometimes a bit more clear on the daily than a four hour chart. Now you could theoretically just do all your support and resistance tracking on just a four hour chart. I like to have a look at the daily and the weekdays, just making sure I see prominent levels. And then what I do is very, very prominent levels. 
I'll go on the four hour chart and just embolden the lines or color them a little bit different. So when I see it, when I'm in, in the trade day trading and I kind of go reference my four hour chart, I'm like, oh, okay, that, that area up there that I've changed, let's say I change it to color red, that's like the highest price that the pound dollar has been in you know nine months. So I need to pay attention to that or a year, two years, you know, from looking at the daily. Now going forward as price played out, price came down and tested support, pierced through a bit and lifted. So if I see that rejection on a breakdown and it's lifting back through, I would be on my lower time frame chart trying to find ways to get into the uptrend. Okay, price here pulled back on a daily chart and I'm sure on a far chart I would indicate that as an area of support. Now this was a beauty and I was I was actually a very active seller in my PAM fund in this area price. When we retested it, this was a gift. Price came out, didn't spend a lot of time above that prior level and was rejected. Boy, you know, on the daily chart, it could be seen. On the four hour chart, it could be seen. And on the lower time frame charts, there was plenty of opportunities to get into the downtrend. And the downtrend actually continued to build and, and accelerate and grow momentum and literally came down, tested that support for a period of time, and then broke through and accelerated uh, through prior levels. So making some adjustments. So whenever we keep trading forward in time, any lines that are broken through don't mean anything to me anymore. So let's say I'm right here, price breaks through that level and accelerates down. Okay, this level doesn't mean anything to me. If anything, I'd move this line up and call this area uh, area of resistance. Price came down, tested support, challenged to lift a few times, failed, sold off. Came down, blew through support. Okay, so that line doesn't mean anything to me anymore. That support is gone. Price traded, came right down, tested perfectly, tested once, tested twice, no big bounces. And another thing, this is just like a door. The more time you see price coming and knocking on the door, eventually that door is going to open and let them through. So if I see the market testing, 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 and then it breaks through, I, I jump on that break that breakdown. Or if I see press price pressing, pressing, pressing resistance, and then break through, I jump on that breakthrough pulse move on my lower time frame chart. So price broke through, okay. Now I'm going to measure the resistance in this area. Support broke, now where was resistance as price is selling off? That way if price bounces, I know where are my potential areas for resistance? And there we sit. We're, we've come down, we've tested recent support, and we're holding slightly above it on a daily chart. So tracking support and resistance is utilized to frame up the structure of the market. And it's also utilized to help you intraday see price reacting to these key support and resistance level levels that you've tracked on a four hour chart or a daily chart to to create opportunities to go look for directional trades on your lower time frame hey price came up and tested it's failing it's rolling over on my five minute chart my 15 minute chart or 30 minute chart i'm looking to catch pulse moves pulse entries to the downside because I'm, I'm, I have a high expectation that the energy and price, there's a lot of energy to the downside as price is leaving a rejected test of a key level. And then the next area where I work a lot of my trades, I'd say about in my typical trading, I would say about 65%, 60 to 65% of my trades are out of news releases. So when a key economic report hits, usually four or five of the eight to 10 currency pairs that we typically track are moving and they're moving with energy. Well, what does that mean? Follow through. 
That means when I get a trade entry, I have a higher expectation of follow through because the market hasn't been going sideways for the last half hour. It's moving with some authority. That's when I want to get into trades. That, that's where I can get the bigger moves. So if I'm not targeting trades as price reacts to support and resistance levels, the predominance of time I'm working price action out of news releases. And in the next video when I talk about news trading, I'll tell you what's kind of cool about going in and trading news and how efficient it can be. So I just want to make sure tracking support and resistance levels are important because they're trade opportunities. And the next, you know, kind of key thing that I pay attention to is is price action out of news releases. So now that I've covered how simple it is to track support and resistance, what charts to use, now let's go over and talk about trading out of news events.